We are also in the midst of engineering our NZ2 plant. NZ2 is expected to be three times the size of NZ1 at a commercially advantaged location, convenient to supply Chicago O'Hare International Airport with sustainable aviation fuel. We expect to be able to say more about NZ2 in the near future. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I examine the possible location of Chivo's NZ2 facility. In my research, I found clues that point to either Iowa or Illinois, and I will take you through my thought process step by step. Jiva has revealed that they have already begun the engineering of NC2, and they have disclosed the following details. It will be three times the size of NC1, and it will be in close proximity to Chicago O'Hare International Airport. So my guess is, it will probably be located in Illinois or one of its surrounding states. But Chiva has recently shared other information that suggests it plans to expand its operations in the state of Iowa. So let's explore why Iowa would be a suitable location. On the 16th of March of 23, Chiva put out this press release stating it has entered a joint development agreement with Southwest Iowa Renewable Energy to measure, report, and verify CI score. Cyrus, a dry milk corn based ethanol plant near Kunzel Bluffs in Iowa, designed to process approximately 44 million bushels of feed corn and produce approximately 125 million gallons of ethanol. The Cyrus operations cannot be linked to Jeeva's RNG project in Northwest Iowa. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but Mike Jerky, the CEO of Sire, was quoted in Jivo's press release. And he attended the Iowa Renewables 2023 Summit, which was held about a month before Jivo's press release was published. He moderated a panel discussion with the road to low carbon ethanol as the topic. And Lindsay Fitzgerald, Jivo's VP of Government Relations, also attended this summit and participated in the following session which was moderated by Grant Menke, Deputy Secretary at Iowa State Department of Agriculture. And in case you missed it, Jivo put out a tweet from this event. And Jivo has also officially congratulated Grant on his new appointment, so we can assume that he is a person with whom Jivo's management team has a close working relationship with. Most people mostly know Jivo as a sustainable aviation fuel company. In Iowa, you're here doing renewable natural gas. Tell us how your RNG project ties into your vision for SAF. Sure. So um, at Jivo, we're about complete decarbonization. So we want to decarbonize that whole entire ecosystem, whether it's what's happening on the farm all the way through to flight. So for us, RNG fits into that portfolio as we're thinking about what's going into powering a facility. Today, our RNG is going onto the pipeline and heading out to California. Um, tomorrow or in the future, this RNG could go towards powering our plant. Maybe it goes to Lake Preston, maybe it goes somewhere else. It can help reduce the CI score of that plant. It's no secret, Iowa is ranked the number one state when it comes to corn production, closely followed by Illinois. And South Dakota, the state where Jeeva's NC1 plant is located, is the fifth largest corn producer in the US. What about ethanol? Well, Iowa is also the nation's leader in renewable fuel production, with its 42 ethanol refineries capable of producing 4.5 billion gallons annually, plus 11 biodiesel facilities operating within the state. Last year was a new record year for Iowa when it comes to renewable ethanol production, which increased with 100 million gallons, thanks to the local corn supply. So surely, Iowa must be on Jeeva's list of favorable locations for its future facilities. Let's stay on IRFA's website and check out its board members. Fittingly, we find a representative of Jeevo, 
Kent Hartwig. He's based in Des Moines, Iowa, and specializes in building strategic governmental partnerships as Jivo's director of state government affairs. Jivo hired him less than a year ago from Chevron Renewable Energy Group, a company which runs its operations from Ames in Iowa. Another Iowa-based company is Echo Engineers. Jivo recruited Karen Jones from them as their director of sustainability. That transition also took place last year, so Jiva has in a short time employed two people in key roles who have good local knowledge of the Iowa area. A while ago, Jiva retweeted this post, which also has ties to the state of Iowa. Chuck Grassley, a U.S. senator representing Iowa, who has urged the U.S. Treasury Department to utilize Oregon's greed model in the RFS tax policy. So I want the Treasury Department to take note. This science is found at the Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory. The National Lab has developed a state-of-the-art model for estimating greenhouse emissions by fuel source. GWU wants to add its NC1 plant to the Summit Carbon Solutions planned carbon pipeline. Summit Carbon Solutions says it will provide Jivo with the same services as its 32 ethanol plant partners, gathering CO2 emissions and piping it to western North Dakota for underground storage. Summit describes its 4.5 billion Midwest Carbon Express pipeline as the world's largest carbon capture pipeline, with 2,000 miles of pipeline in five states. Notice that Illinois is not included. NC1 is not part of Summit's pipeline permit application with the South Dakota Public Utilities Commission, and the hearings are scheduled for September. The pipeline is planned to run through Kingsbury County, which includes Lake Preston. It's important to highlight that Iowa-based Summit has yet to obtain permits in any of the five states, but hopes to be operational in 2024. I will come back to this shortly, but first, let's take a closer look at the proposed route for Summit's pipeline. The captured carbon will be sequestered in North Dakota. The pipeline will then go through South Dakota and Kingsbury County, where NC1 is located, then further southeast, crossing Iowa's northwest border, passing near Rock Rally and Jewel's RNG project, and then branch out in three directions. And I find the eastern branch of the pipeline particularly interesting, since it's closest to Chicago at a commercially advantaged location, convenient to supply Chicago O'Hare International Airport. So if Jeeva were to build NC2 somewhere in this area, the distance to Chicago O'Hare would be somewhere in between 420 and 360 kilometers. And if Jeeva chose to locate its facility even closer to the state border, the distance would be reduced to 200 kilometers. There's one problem though. Potentially a big problem. A proposed legislation could kill or restrict the pipelines in Iowa. The Iowa House voting to require developers to secure at least 90% of the land needed for a CO2 pipeline voluntarily from landowners. That's right, and that is before the government could or would give approval to use eminent domain to secure the rest of that land. It's our top story now at 6. Lawmakers voted 73 to 20 on House Bill 565, while two of them said they abstained from voting. The bill would also let farmers seek compensation years down the road if a crop yield is depressed in the area surrounding a CO2 pipeline. The Democrats and Republicans agree it is doubtful the bill will move out of the Senate and has almost no chance of being signed by the governor. The legislation has provided intense debate across the state. A county governments located along the proposed pipeline route are at the center of the eminent domain debate. Just yesterday, Woodbury County Supervisor Chairman Matthew Ong said that the board will continue to represent residents and their concerns about the pipeline. Uh, we stand united with other counties and their resistance to any infringements on private property, and that's really the key issue here is, is when the state enacts legislation to say 90% of the project needs to be voluntary, why not 95? 
Further discussion is expected on CO2 pipelines during a public roundtable set for 3.30 on April 7th. That will include Plymouth, Monona, and Woodbury County supervisors, as well as area legislators all on hand. So if enough landowners oppose the construction of Summit's pipeline on their land, GEVA will not be able to capture its carbon dioxide from its net zero plants. And this in turn will affect the CI scores of their biofuel products. It will still have a CI score close to net zero, but not CO2 negative, as Pat Gruber has proclaimed. I take for granted that GEVA is keeping a close eye on how this develops but I'm not sure if it's a potential deal breaker for them. They may have alternative solutions. One possible alternative could involve AGM, and I will now unbox my theory for you. AGM is also planning a CO2 pipeline from Iowa to their carbon sequestration site in Decatur, Illinois. The pipeline will be developed, owned, and operated by Wolf Carbon Solutions, the captured carbon will be transported from ADM's ethanol facilities in Iowa, which are Clinton and Cedar Rapids, to Decatur for permanent underground storage. ADM is currently leading the way in carbon capture and sequestration capabilities in Decatur, which stores more than 3.5 million metric tons of CO2 a mile and a half underground. If you're a GEO shareholder, you're probably already well aware of GEO's MOU with ADM. But let's scrutinize what it actually says. The MOU contemplates production of both ethanol and isobutanol, and the MOU specifically points out two of ADM's existing facilities in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and the one in Decatur, Illinois. The isobutanol is expected to be produced at a proposed new facility in Decatur that would employ ADM's carbon capture and sequestration capabilities. A fellow GWI investor was kind enough to share an email reply he got from John Richardson, GWI's Director of Investor Relations. John was asked about the loans for NC1 and replied the following, We are approaching all potential sources for loans simultaneously. Third parties like ADM wouldn't be included for this application because this one is specific for NC1. NC2 could be a different story. At that point, ADM might be included if everything continues to work out in that direction. I don't know if ADM's balance sheet would come into play, but it's a possibility." End of quote. Let's add some more dots to connect. Jeeva's partner Accents recently announced the launch of the Jetanol brand for its alcohol to jet technology. This technology is being deployed for five industrial scale projects that are now in advanced stages of engineering or early phases of construction. Accents posted this news on their LinkedIn page and someone made a comment asking them to elaborate on these five projects. Accents wrote that they are doing three projects with Jivo, including one with Isodudinal and one project that is still confidential. Now we've had several questions from investors related to the recent comments from Axons about their exposure to projects with GEVO. They referenced three projects and obviously we are working with them on NC1 and NC2. However, the details of the third project are still confidential. I confirm there is one, but it's confidential. We are planning several sites that would be developed in cooperation with existing ethanol plants. This was getting a bit confusing. So I had to write John an email and ask him about NC2. And he was quick to respond. All of our plants that are being planned right now are going to be ethanol to jet designs. At least that's our current plan, which is based on our exclusive licensing agreement with Accents for their ethanol to jet process. The decision to partner with Accents was based on the maturity of that process, which makes financing a large project like this easier. I'm glad we got that straight. So we received confirmation that NC1 and NC2 will be ethanol to jet. That makes me believe that this part about the isobutanol is either misinformation from Accents or perhaps a Freudian slip. I think this slip up from Accents tells us that the confidential project is the one that will use isobutanol. The details of the third project are still confidential. 
Connect the dots here. Remember, the MOU with ADM points out Decatur as the site for the isobutanol plant. So now there's only one prime candidate left. Cedar Rapids. That's where I end up when I put all these bits and pieces together. And it's only 200 miles from Chicago. And this would also explain why ADM could get involved in NC2. By placing NC2 in proximity to ADM's ethanol plants in Cedar Rapids, ADM could start converting them to net zero SAF plants as soon as Jiva has the infrastructure for net zero 2 in place. That would really speed up Jiva's production capacity. Hopefully, ADM also gets a permit to build the CO2 pipeline through Iowa to Decatur. Cedar Rapids would be a very strategic location that would provide many synergies for both ADM and Jivo. So, do you agree with me? Or do you have another theory about where NC2 will be located? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoy my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And once again, I have to remind you, you shouldn't consider any of my content as financial advice. I'm just sharing my research, seasoned with my personal views and opinions. However, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye bye.